Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church. I'm Pastor Randy Richardson. We're going to start off this morning singing Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want and whatever you need from God today. Just tell him what you want. Hallelujah. Jesus on the main line. Tell him. deliverance, healing, anything, provision that we need. He says, I'll meet all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's a promise. We can come boldly into the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me.
years ago that says, "Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you can trust the Lord?
but fail. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 9. Matthew 9, verse number 27. Matthew 9, 27. And we're going to get there in just a moment, so go ahead and find that text, and, and then we'll actually start at verse number 26, and then we'll continue on through verse uh, 30. I've entitled this message, Getting Desperate with God. Getting Desperate with God. I've, I've had the most urgent prayer request this week that I can, that, that it's been a long time since I've had this many urgent prayer requests uh, right in a row. Uh, situations where people have cancer and uh, blindness and tumors and rare blood disorders and pain and a husband left the wife and and desperate desperate needs physically mentally emotionally financially on and on and people are crying out for the lord to answer prayer praise god we see someone that desires god and just desires him with everything that they've got. And we call that person passionate or on fire for the Lord. I had a relative that was severely abused as a child. Their parents divorced and the father got the children. And, and he um, just wouldn't care for them. He, he didn't feed them properly. And basically... Uh, fed them dog food and, and, and on and on. It was, it was a horrible thing. And this young boy came to live uh, with his grandfather. And uh, I can remember sitting at the table and the boy just eating like there was no tomorrow. And, and this went on for months. And, and, and the grandfather said to me, he said, Randy, I really, I really long for the day when that boy says I'm full. I want to hear that. And so they just spread out a table every single day and made sure there was enough food. And the kid, when he was through eating, he'd stuff it in his pockets and hide it in his bedroom because in his mind, he was afraid that there would come a day where he would not get something to eat. He remembered that abuse. And one night in shock, we all were sitting around the table and this young, this young man says, man, I'm full. And we could all just shouted hallelujah as we realized that the, uh, the fellow was, the young man was finally beginning to trust. And he was finally beginning to see that his needs were met. And oftentimes we treat God like that. And we, when we are in lack, we run to God in, in a desperate situation. And we say, I'm hungry for a healing. I'm hungry for deliverance. I'm hungry for provision. I'm hungry for this miracle or that miracle. We're seeking God for something and then we take him for granted when everything's going wonderful and great and then when we get deprived again we, we, we immediately cry out back to God and, and it's human nature and I wish it wasn't so but it is and we lose our zeal and our drive and oftentimes we become complacent, cold and even backslidden and so we need to stay desperate before the Lord and and we need to stay right with God and, 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 and we need to make sure that, that we are operating in desperate passion for the needs that we have and the needs that are brought before us from other people. Jesus has just answered a desperate father whose daughter died. He falls, the, the father falls down and worships the Lord and begs Jesus to come and lay his hand on his daughter so that she might live. Jesus is interrupted by a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She spent all that she had, but the news came, and she heard that Jesus healed the sick, and so uh, his power was there, and so she touches the hem of his garment, and she's immediately 
made whole. Now Jesus goes to the home of the father that originally came to him before the woman so that he can pray for the young girl that was dead. In verse 26 of Matthew 9, the report of this went out into all the land. And now in verse 27, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. Jesus no more leaves the healing of this desperate woman with the issue of blood when he comes heading to the house and now there's two blind men that follow him all the way to the house. He can't go from one miracle to another without a miracle being pulled on him in between. The good news is, is Jesus is never, he never runs out of miraculous power. He never has a busy signal on his phone. He's never too swamped with people calling on him and pulling on him that he cannot reach out to you and touch you. Hallelujah. People who have desperate needs need a miracle working God. And we have one this morning. These blind men, they can't see, they can't work, they can't draw a disability check. There's no such thing in this time period. They're at the mercy of society and their families, and they followed him crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. They could not see him. They could not see the miracle power that operated in front of those that had clear vision. But they could hear they had never seen him perform the miracles that he did, but they could hear what he had done. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You may not have seen God perform a miracle in your lifetime, but I'm here to tell you, you can hear about it through the word of God and through other testimonies of, of God's people. The miracle working power of God has operated in my life since I was a small child. I can tell you testimony after testimony of testimony of how God's hand moved on my life. And it's not because I'm special. It's not because I'm a minister. It's because I'm a child of God and I've learned how to tap into the promises of God. These men were deprived of bodily sight, yet they had spiritual ears and spiritual eyes to see beyond their blind eyes to see themselves healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, in his inheritance to the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power. 1 Corinthians 1.27 says. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world. To put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world. To put to shame the things that are mighty. Jesus said to these two blind men. Do you believe? that I can do this. Desperate times require desperate faith, requiring you to believe what you've been taught your whole life, what you know is true in your spirit, what the word of God says. And Jesus says, according to your faith, let it be unto you. Can you believe God to do what you need? Can you believe God to heal your body? Can you believe God to provide for you? Can you believe God to reach that wayward child? Can you believe? These two men who followed Jesus into the house kept crying out to, until they received what they were desperate for. And when you get desperate enough, you don't care 
who's listening. You don't care who's watching you. You throw your pride out the window. You cry out to God because you know he's the only one that can answer your desperate need. Just a few days later, Matthew 15, 21 through 8, 28 says, Then Jesus went out from there and departed the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Oh, let me tell you, he came to this woman as she's crying out to him, My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And we don't know how severe. The Bible isn't very clear exactly what happened, but, you know, we know that she was not Jewish, and we know that uh, Jesus at first denied her and said, No, I've come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the woman said to him, Yes, but even the dogs uh, get uh, the crumbs from the master's table. And Jesus said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be unto you as you desire. And the daughter was healed from that very hour. She was loose from those demons that held her in bondage. It's one thing to believe God for yourself. But it's another thing if you have children that are helpless or you have family members where the situation is absolutely helpless and you have to touch God for your family member. This woman was desperate. She was passionate. There wasn't e this wasn't even her religion. This wasn't even her theology. It didn't match what she was raised to believe. But she found, she heard enough stories of the healing power of God to where she said, I'm going to believe God. No matter what it takes, I'm going to believe God. Desperate situations cause us to forget about our church doctrine and forget about what we've always held to. And we begin to believe what the word of God says more so than the rules of our denomination or our church. You will cry out to God when you know it is God only that can answer the government can't help you. The doctors can't help you. The lawyer can't help you. The judge can't help you. Society cannot help you. But oh, God can help you. Glory to his name. We used to watch the little cartoon Popeye. And he used to say when, he, when Brutus had beat up on him and he'd had all he could stand, he'd say, I've had all I can stands, and I can stands no more. And that's when he would reach somehow and get his uh, can of spinach and pop it open and get that spinach in his mouth and chew it up. And immediately strength came to his arms, and immediately he was able to defeat Brutus. There have been times in my life when the physical pain has been so horrible the mental anguish has been so great. The emotional pain has been more than I could bear. The mental worry. And the only one that could heal me, the only one that could help me, the only one that could deliver me, the only one that could set me free was Jesus Christ. Jesus admired this woman's desperate faith and he healed her daughter without even laying a hand on her. In verse seven, or chapter 17 of Matthew, so when they'd come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. A man comes to Jesus. His son is suffering uh, severely, often in the fire, often in the water. And any time that there is uh, suicidal tendencies or any time that there are uh, situations where a child is cutting themselves or harming themselves in some way, a teenager or a young adult, 
or even an older adult is harming themselves, there's a devil behind it and it needs to be cast out in Jesus' name. Often in the fire, often in the water, Jesus rebuked the devil and the devil came out of the boy. Praise the Lord. The child was cured from that very hour. Hallelujah. Is something happening in your life oftentimes? This story that we just read to you said that this happened to this child oftentimes falling into the water, oftentimes falling into the fire. He didn't just fall on the bed or fall on the couch. He fell uh, into situations that could kill him. The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. Is it happening oftentimes? If it is, you need to bring it to Jesus for a cure this morning. Lastly, in chapter 20 of the book of Matthew, it said as they, in verse 29 through 33, as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Behold, two blind men sitting by the road when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out saying, have mercy on us, O son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out the more saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Now this is two different blind men. He's already healed the mother too. They're, they're healed. They're gone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But now two blind men. They probably heard about the other blind men getting healed. You know, a lot of the blind people probably hung together to compare stories and find out where they could go, what corner they could go get on so that people would be merciful and throw a coin at them in, in pity. The word was spreading around. And so sitting by the road, they heard that Jesus was coming this way. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is walking these Isles today. Jesus is in your living room. He's there in your kitchen, wherever you're watching this internet uh, uh, broadcast, wherever you're at right now, look at me. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is right there with you, and He's there. All you got to do is get desperate. All you got to do is start to cry out to God. All you got to do is cry out to the Lord and say, This is an impossible situation. And I can't handle it in my own power, my own strength. But I know your grace is sufficient for me. And I know you can take care of the situation if I'll just turn it over to you. He's here in your house. He's in this house. He's in your house. And he's here to meet your need. Whatever the need is, cry out, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Do you want to... Jesus asked these two blind men, well, what do you want? Now, you know, it was quite obvious what they wanted. They wanted their eyesight. But who knows? They might have said, oh, I need $500 to take me through the rest of the year. You know, I, 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 I need a new camel or I need a new donkey or something to get me from one place to another. Who knows what they would, he would have asked. So Jesus says, I want to hear it from your mouth. What is it that you want? And a lot of times, like the scripture says that we quoted earlier in the service, you have not because you ask not. God wants you to be specific. There's times when I've said to the Lord, Lord, I need $250. I need $300. I need $100. I need this amount of money to come in to be able to take care of this particular need. I get very specific with the Lord. I've said, Lord, it's my left big toe that has infection in it that needs to be healed. I'm very specific that I've got a daughter that's bound by drugs and, and perversion and needs to be delivered from the demons that are binding her up. I'm very specific with the Lord. And I want you today to be specific with the Lord. Will you pray with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring to you this specific need. We cry out to you, God, and we say, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. 
Bring healing, virtue into my body in Jesus' name. Bring healing, virtue into the bodies of the people that are watching this today. Come into that home right now, Lord, in that car, wherever they're listening. Come right in to that vehicle, into that living room, into that kitchen, into that bedroom, wherever they're at, Lord, and heal their bodies. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Loose them from Satan's bondage in Jesus' name. Satan, you are forbidden to come into their life and interfere in the name of Jesus. Loose them right now for the glory of God. Father, bring provision. Whatever they lack, meet their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you for healing and delivering and providing. And Lord, most of all, if there's someone listening that's not right with you, we pray as they cry out to you and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead and I want you to be Lord over my life in Jesus' name. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. And he'll save your soul. He'll, if you're backslidden, he'll bring you back to God. Hallelujah. Whatever you need, God will restore you. Hallelujah. He'll make a way where there is no way. I want to thank you so much today for tuning in and watching this service with us today. And if you need anything whatsoever, send us a message, call us on the phone, come to our home, whatever you need to do. Alicia and I are here to pray for you and minister to you in any way that we possibly can. We want to see you walking in victory. We want to see you walking in provision and blessing. And you can do it in Jesus' name. Thank you for being faithful with your tithes and offerings. Send all of your tithes to 816 Columbus Street, Waycross, Georgia, 31503. And we thank you so much for your generosity and, and be blessed in Jesus' name. Be back with us Wednesday night as we're continuing in our study in 1 John chapter 5. And, and we want you to be a part of that. It starts at 6 o'clock live. If you can be a part of that, do so. If you can't, it's on demand anytime after that. You can just click on the link in YouTube or under uh, Facebook. And either way, you'll be able to see the entirety of that service. Be blessed and we love you. Hallelujah.